The Bible says it this way in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We'll read 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. May the Lord add a blessing to both the hearing and reading of his holy and his sacred word. And for a title today, I just want to say it with you, Believing God for My All. I'm believing God for my all. Let's pray, family. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord God, praying that you touch my mind, my mouth, and my spirit, God, that I will give you glory with everything I say. Every scripture I lift, bring glory back to yourself. Help somebody, Lord God, that came in here with their mind on one thing, Lord God, but you woke them up this morning, God, to get glory out of that life. Help us, Father God, to focus on you in this moment, in this instance. I pray that your word will challenge us. I pray that your word will encourage us. I pray that your word brings us closer to you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And the old church said, amen. 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 Please have your seats in the presence of our Lord. I'm, I'm believing God for my all. It is very hard in the state that we are in, beloved, for people to stay focused on what God has said for you because there's so much noise in the air, and the noise in the air seems to only come when we are at our weakest state. Has anybody ever wondered why infomercials come in the middle of the night? When it seems like you're already ailing and you can't sleep, the marketing department says, well, you might as well buy something. If you're afraid that something's wrong because you can't go to sleep, maybe they can sell you another pill because the pill you took for one thing is not allowing you to sleep, and now you're worried about the last two pills you took, and now you got to take a pill for your anxiety. Can I help somebody today that I'm believing God for my all, and I can't focus on what people say because people are not adding to what God has promised. If I forget the promises of God, I'm focusing more on man. God didn't give me a heart to worship a man. God gave me a heart to worship the one who put the sun where it sits, the one who designed the earth to rotate around the sun and for it to be 6.30 in the morning at the same time every time. I don't know how it's done, but that's God's job, and that's the one that I'm going to put my trust in. That's the one that I'm going to believe that he has my future. He's the one that I'm going to believe because he knows what he made me for. And if he made me to do all that he's called me to do, beloved, I'm going to do exactly what he's called me to do because he holds my future. We are in a state of where people are competing with the glory of God. People want to be more important and more influential in your life, and you find yourselves competing with what people say versus what you say you are. If you say you are a child of God, you should be focused on what your father say. If you are the, the king of king's kids, that you make sure that you ask permission of your king. Oh, yeah, it's going to get rough in here. But if I am a king's kid, I got to make certain my life lines up with what my king said. I can't be perpetrating want to be in the family on its, only when it's convenient. Y'all know them kids, the kids that only come around when you handing out stuff. But there are also some kids that don't come around when you need something. 
if your car ain't working and they need to do something for you, it seems like they don't answer the phone. But as soon as you handing out things and handing out all types of shiny things, they first in line. That's how we are with God. When God wants the fruit of our lips, we strain to give him praise. But when trouble comes a knocking on our door, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me please. God says, if you are my child, why we can't rap all the time? How come we can't commune together? Why can't we have fellowship except for an emergency? What Jesus is trying to help all of us understand is that we focus so much on things that we can't control, we forget the promises that are at our fingertips. And you guys may have heard me say this, and I'll say it again. If you focus too much on yesterday, I'll call that depression. And if you get ahead of yourself and look at tomorrow too much, we'll call that anxiety. That's why the believers say words like this. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Don't know what tomorrow may bring. Can't control what happened happened yesterday, but this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus was spending time with his disciples and helping those people that had been walking with him delineate. Somebody say delineate. Separate themselves by the characteristics of a believer and the characteristics the Bible says Gentiles. What Jesus is meaning in this text is unbelievers, the world. That he says there should be a different belief pattern of those who walk with Jesus versus those who don't walk with Jesus. I'm ready to get right into the text. Well, in the very first verse we read, Matthew 6 and 31, he says, therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith thou shall we be clothed? Here is our first point. Believe God will provide. Believe that God will provide. It's very difficult to believe when we are being bombarded from every marketing scheme that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Every time you turn on the stupid news, you hear about the whole world got corona and the other half is dead already. It's very difficult to believe if you don't make yourself believe. What you feed will grow. If you continue to feed your heart with fear, you're going to be a scary cat. But if you feed your heart with the Word of God, you can regurgitate the promises of God and believe that God will provide. Far too often, we, 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 fly, we fail to be secure. Someone say secure in the Lord and because we worry all the time. Can I, can I minister to the worriers in the room about things that's not even our business? We worry about things that's completely up to God. We need to make certain we handle our part. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your request known on to God. This is what I'm trying to say, transliterated, that you need to pray and go to bed. The rest of that is up to God. Worry causes us to focus less on God and focus more on our own ability. Come on, worriers, I need y'all to talk to me. The Lord is working on our hearts today. Worry causes us to focus less on God's ability and more on our own strengths, on our own bank accounts, on our own security. Come on, the Lord is preaching to somebody. If you worried about something, I'll break it down. You worried about what you're going to eat when the preacher get done. You worried about how much money you got to get something to eat, or you worried about if your rent is due. Everybody seems to worry about the same things, but we worry about them at different scales. Jesus said, I want to get right to the root of what everybody be dealing with. Worry will rob you of your relationship with God. 
It will rob you of his promises, the one that you guys hear every sermon. God said in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your pathways. Tell your neighbor, stop worrying. Jesus reminds us not to worry, but to have faith. Say what? He didn't just say stop. He says stop, but do this. He says, I'm not negating the fact that you got issues. I'm just trying to let you put your energy in the right place. You always going to have trouble. He says, in this life, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's the kind of person I want to talk to about my tribulation. I want to talk to somebody who's already conquered my fears. I want to talk to somebody who's walked on top of my waters. Why in the world am I talking to somebody that can't handle my business when I could be talking to Jesus? <laughs> Jesus reminds us not to worry, but to have faith. A deeper dive into the word worry is to be, here it is, distracted by the cares and affairs of this world. Uh-huh, that's right. Don't worry about being convicted right now. This sermon is for all of us. That if you focus in too much on what's going on around you, you ain't paying attention to what needs to be growing in you. The thing inside of you isn't growing because your fears are growing because of your concerns on the outside. Is God going to keep my family safe? Is God going to watch over me on this job? Is God going to get that lady out the line that sneezed three times and I got to check out right behind her? Is God going to protect me? Come on and say something back to me, y'all. We worry more than we pray. He says... You distracted by the cares and the affairs of this world, but you ain't relying on God. Here it is. Here's the hard part, and the rest of it we're going to shout. To worry is to sin. Why is it a sin, preacher? Because Jesus said, don't worry. It ain't deep. A sin is doing the opposite thing of what God told you to do. If he said, don't worry and trust me, what are you saying to your own self? Don't trust God for this, but trust God for that. You can't pick and choose, boo-boo. You got to trust God with everything. Trust God with your kids. Trust God with your husband. Trust God with your church. Trust God with your job. Trust God with your business. Trust God with your boyfriend. Trust God with your girlfriend. Everything that matters to you matters to God. You know, I ain't going I, I, I to pray about this because um, God might not be that happy about this relationship. Well, you is the smart one in this class. If you can't pray about it, it's probably wrong. Jesus tells us not to tolerate, I love that word, worry or anxiety because our Father knows our needs. If you believe and you know that God got my back, the thing that we worry about, family, here it is, we worry about the right now. I know God's going to do it. Where's my analytical folks? I know God's going to do it, but when? My faith says he's going to do it, but my patience got me worried. When, who, how? When, who, how, God? He says, I need you to chill. You is in my business. I ain't in yours. You brought it to me. Let me handle it in my time. The blessings of the Lord don't come in a microwave. They come in a crock pot. Slow and steady. Where when you do put your fork in there, the meat is coming off the bone. Sometimes you can pull something out the microwave and it'll burn you before you get a chance to eat it. Y'all get that in the car. The stuff that come fast ain't good for you. You just, you wasn't patient to wait on what God had for you. Yeah, the word 
of God is planted deep in your heart. And, and, and when you study and you show yourself approved, a, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth, that, that word just bubbles up in your heart when you get worried. That word just comes up and reminds you that I, I am a lamb and he's my shepherd. I, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The word will just start coming out of you. How, pastor, is that a magic pill? Nah, I put my mind to study so when my worry came, the word that's in me going to come out to remind. But if you let worries of the world enter in, here it is, they will choke out the work done by the Spirit of God in you. You will end up going backwards when you worry. Hey, Amen. I need a testimony right here. Anybody feel like they standing still? The only thing working in your heart is your eyelids when you're trying to sleep. Worried about everything. Worried if I going to choke in the middle of the night. Worried is that piece of dust on the ceiling fan going to fall in my mouth. Worried. When you begin to worry about the things of this life, I need you to repeat God's promises to yourself and trust. Somebody say it. Trust that he already knows what you need and he will supply. If we worry about food and clothing, then we have little faith. According to Matthew 6 and 30, we have little faith in God's promises to care for us. We have little faith in God's power to deliver that promise. Look at God giving us the lashings today. The Bible wants us to be reminded that if we want to be down with Christ. We got to be down with Christ in every aspect of the relationship. We can't pick and choose when we want God. You can't pick them up in an emergency and then put them down when it's, I got this one, God. The opposite of worry is faith. We must have faith that God will bring us through at all times. The good times as well as the bad times. He will show up when he knows it's the right time. Somebody, don't look at nobody else. Talk to that person in your seat. God is coming when God comes. Don't you turn your head. Tell the person in your seat. God is going to show up in your situation when God shows up. The Bible says it this way, that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So those things that you don't see, God says, I need you to have faith, have faith and believe and have hope that I know what you stand in need of, that I provided before your mother was born. I've already made a way before your fat chubby feet hit the floor. I've already worked out things you've been worrying about. Ain't that funny, family? Family, how we are wired, we'll worry about something for nine months, and as soon as we get it, we start worrying about something else. You know what? I got this a little quick. Something must be wrong. Oh, I got one. I need to look out for something wrong because ain't nothing wrong in a while. Here it is. The Bible says if we continue down the same chapter in, in faith, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him for that he cometh to God. He who cometh to God must believe that he is, and here it is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody say, I need God for my all. I'm believing God for my all. Let me give you some word where you can focus on that all. The Bible says, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 and 19. Here we go. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. Here we go. In all things, things, we are overwhelmingly conquered them through him who loved us. Romans 8 and 37. Last one. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have, watch it, the abundance for every good deed. 
I'm believing God for my all. I'm believing God for my all. I'm believing God that I'm leaving Michigan and I'm landing somewhere else. But when I land, there's a blessing waiting for me. I'm believing God for my all. I might not have been able to afford the trip, but God made a way and he going to get me back. Here it is. Matthew 6 and 32, he says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Second point, I need to believe God's promise. I don't need to just read God's promise. I need to believe God's promise. I need to eat God's promises. I need to regurgitate God's promises. I need to remind myself of God's promises. I need to write God's promises around my neck. I need to meditate on God's promises both day and night. I need to know God's promises because God's promises have got me through. I wouldn't be 44, about to be 45 without God's promises. If it was up to me, I'll be under the jail. But God's, God's promise on my life gave me grace. Jesus uses the term Gentile in the portion to compare the behavior of a believer versus the behavior of a non-believer. Family, I need you to take some notes. If you walk in down the street, can anybody see the difference in your walk and a non-believer's walk? We have to be careful, family of God, trying to fit in to what the world standards are and not want to offend anybody with holiness because we are called to be holy. Yeah, it's about to get rough, but we have to represent the kingdom of God wherever we go. We can't be like the world on the job and holy in the sanctuary. That is hypocritical. We need to be more holy on the job than we are in the sanctuary, that we come here to fellowship and give power and take that holiness back to the workplace but you got to believe that God is with you believe God's promises don't feel like you by yourself oh I don't know the word and I don't know what to say I just need you to open your mouth Open your mouth and believe that God has implanted something in your heart. Tell somebody how you knew the Lord. Tell somebody how you grew in the Lord. Tell somebody that you still struggle, but you still yet holding on. Because somebody needs to hear that I ain't got it all together, but I still believe God. Our, our, our minds got to be focused on God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Romans 12 and 12. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Here it is, to trust God in all adversity, we must become familiar with his promises, that we can't just go high and run in a corner when all hell breaks loose. We need to start getting some ammo in our guns. Forgive me, family. We need to be ready for this spiritual warfare that the weapons that we fight with are not carnal, but they are in high places. This is a spiritual warfare that we in, and you can't fight spiritual things with a carnal mind. Preaching here, Ray, that God wants you to be equipped, equipped for what you're going through. He he. God says, I need you to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads to evil doing. Psalms 37, 7 through 8. Not one word of all good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you. Not one of them has failed. Joshua 23 and 14. As for God, he, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all those who take refuge in him. Has anybody found out that God is a strong tower? Have you found out that he's a shelter to those who run to him? 
God wants us to prove what he's promised. Prove what he's promised. Trust him on your worst day. Trust him on your best day. Trust him on your frustrated day. Trust him on your terrified day. And trust him on your worried day. When you know that you've been worrying, I need you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord so you can calm yourself because I got one more for you. If you have an anxious spirit, everybody around you gonna be anxious children learn anxiety Matthew 6 33 to 8 portion says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness our third point believe that you are God's priority is he yours believe that you are God's priority, is he yours? Jesus is very frank. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things you fret about, worry about, will be added unto you. But let me give you a reason for some of our fretting because our priorities are all out of whack. That God is not a priority, but for some of us, God is a problem because we know where we're supposed to be, but, 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 but God is competing with our agenda. And when we're supposed to serve, when we're supposed to pray, we've already prioritized and put every other thing before him. You can say, ouch, if you don't say amen. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What are you saying to me today, preacher? You saying if I talk to God more, I would worry less? Are you saying if I prayed more, my anxiety would subside? Are you saying if I gave more, that God will give me 30, 60, 100 fold? If I prioritize my time, my time wouldn't be wasted with worry. Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are to seek the things of God as a priority over the things of the world. Primarily, it means for us to seek the salvation that is inherent in the kingdom of God because it is greater value than the world's riches. Lord, have mercy that if I want to grow in God, I want people around me that's growing in God. It's about to get hard in here, but I know I got a boo that's on my mind, but I don't want no boo that's not walking the way I'm walking because when my faith gets shaky, I can call on the name of the Lord, but I have somebody in covenant with me who knows the Lord for herself. So when I get shaky, she knows how to pray. So you got to be in covenant with somebody who believe what you believe. Jesus, his teaching included instruction on how to seek God's kingdom. This is so rich. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Here's what he says. Watch it. Watch the structure. Repent and believe in the gospel. Good God from Zion. He says, don't just turn to God and just start asking for stuff. There's a structure to this. First, you got to get your heart right by repenting and turning your back on where you came from. Some of the times we got issues because we learned how to do church, but we never were invited to Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That he says, do you see me high and lifted up? Do you see me as the first and only important thing in your life? And everything else is second. If you have an issue with this priority, we need to have a discussion. You and I need to come back together, and we need to reason together and find out if you call me Lord why won't you keep my commandments? You, you, you said you love me. Why, why won't you keep my commandments? 
What he was saying is that the instruction is you need to have repentance plus belief because those are two fundamental stepping stones which entrench gives us entrance into the kingdom of God. You can't enter the kingdom on good behavior. You can't enter the kingdom with good attendance. You can only enter the kingdom by repenting and believing on the name of Jesus. The reason we must repent because the Bible is clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23, it gets better. Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, I, I feel a, a holler coming on that I can see myself in my sins, but God's grace gave me the opportunity to repent. Y'all ain't understand what God just said, that God's grace gave us the opportunity to repent. Some people ain't getting the opportunity to repent. Some people are going to die in their sins. To repent means that we must change our normal way of thinking. Somebody say, change my stinking thinking. Which is against God. Anything that has, has presented knowledge against God needs to be cast down. The Bible reveals that a carnal, a carnal mind is enmity towards God, hostile towards God. Every time God tries to chasten you, every time God tries to correct you, you find yourself talking to God like Job in the first couple of chapters. You have to read it for that. Everybody just read the first chapter and the last chapter. The learning is in the middle. The learning is in the middle that God will ask us some questions when we ask God questions. Why did you let this happen to my family? Why did you let this happen to my cattle? Why did you let this happen to all my stock? And I can hear God saying, <laughs> where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when I set the sun in the sky? Where were you when I numbered the stars? And when God asks you a question that you can't answer, it'll make you repent we have to make certain that we don't see God as a peer but we see God high and lifted up one worthy of praise one worthy of glory we don't want to be too casual and comfortable with God we should recognize the reverence of being in his presence that when we come before him we should feel his holiness <laughs> Matthew 22 and 37 says, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 6 and 24 says, no one can serve two masters for either they will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and money. I'm going to move right on past that. John 3 and 30 says, he must increase. Here it is. But I must decrease. There is no tug of war. Only one king can sit on the throne of your heart. You can't be king of your heart and God. Somebody got to move. Colossians 3, 1 through 4, he says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things that are on the earth that have died. And your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So he says, why are you focusing on dead stuff when Christ is alive, sitting on the right hand of the Father? Tell your neighbor, lift up your thinking. Lift up your thinking. Satan wants Christians to believe that they're not good enough to receive all of God's goodness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The accuser wants Christians to believe that they are just as wicked as they are or were before they met Jesus. It is not true. Jesus said to the accuser, devil, there is no truth in him. He's the father of lies. That's why he speaks lies. The 
Bible wants us to hear this promise. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. So you tell that dirty devil when he try to remind you of your past, just say it like this. I thank God for grace. I thank God for grace. You should have killed me when I was on your team, but now I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. You can't accuse the brethren. You can't pull me down. I am his and he is mine. Let's go. Matthew 6, 33, the B portion. And all these things shall be added to you. Believe God will prosper you. All right, let me try it out again. Believe that God will prosper you. If you don't believe it, why would anybody else? That's our last point. If you don't believe it, who else going to believe it? You got to believe that God will prosper you, that God will lift up your heavy head, that God will restore your broken heart, that God will put your mind back on the things above and not of things beneath, that God will repair your broken family, that God will put you in a position to do things that you ain't educated for, that God will put you in houses that your credit didn't speak for. It was nothing but the love and the work of God prospering you because you believed. It didn't have nothing to do with what you did. It didn't have nothing to do with how you talk. It had everything to do with God. He says, watch this. <laughs> I'm going to bless you because I got my name on you. That the Lord blesses us for his name's sake. So God gets glory when we get blessed. So what happens to God's name when we defame him in front of folks? That God's name is on us. We got to represent the kingdom everywhere we go. Everything we do, the things we say, our conduct, our character, we are children of God. We've got to represent everywhere and we got to preach sermons everywhere everywhere we go and sometimes use words. He said, and all these things shall be added to you. For if you seek as now directed the kingdom of God first and principally all things pertaining, pertaining to this life shall, somebody say shall, in the course of the divine providence, it will be bestowed on you, and they be, can be contributed to your real welfare, and you would not have a desire in the world. Where is the testimony of the people who just get stuff that you ain't even prayed for? Have you ever been taken over by a blessing that, God, I didn't even know that I needed this, but you gave me abundance before my cabinet ran out? Y'all can't hear me. Some people got a garage full of canned goods, and God knew you was going to get laid off before you did. That the Lord will give you increase, and he's setting up your life in a way that you can't even understand. But what happened? You started seeking God first, and he started putting things back together in your life. He gave you your joy back. He gave you your peace back. See, y'all thought prosperity meant money. No, I'm talking about things that money can't buy. You cannot have a good night's sleep unless the Lord allows you to get a good night's sleep. I don't want a bank full of money and I can't digest no food. That ain't living. God, I want to be able to digest the steak. I don't want a bank full of money and somebody got to wash me up every day. 
We got to get back focused to thanking God on things that we take for granted. Here it is. Watch this, family. The reason that God don't get enough praise from his people, because God is too consistent. We've grown to expect God to do the impossible. We've grown to know God to do things each and every day that we can't do for ourselves. And we've grown complacent and don't even say thank you no more. What if God was like a man and says, you know what? I need you to ask me to breathe. I need you to put a request in for your liver to do what it's supposed to do. But we are so blessed that when we do get sick, we get mad and we don't say thank you for keeping me well for 60 years. Thank you for watching over me when I didn't care nothing about my own health. I put everything in and you still kept me. Thank you, God, for giving me health. Thank you, God, for giving me strength. Thank you, God, for giving me a right mind. Thank you, God, for allowing me to remember my name this morning. Thank you, God. God is so consistent. We didn't forgot how to praise. He shows up so much. We just like, he going to do it again. What if he stopped? I'm so glad that man, that God is not a man, that his character lies on how he blesses. His name rides on him getting glory, and we were made to glorify him. So when we get blessed, he gets glory out of our blessing because we should open up our mouths and give him the fruit of our lips and bring glory to God. <laughs> Believe. That God will prosper you. Why should I believe that God will prosper me? Don't believe what the preachers say. Believe what the words say. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do indeed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father and the Father by him. Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Proverbs 3 and 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The word of God will get us through. The word of God will remind us of who we are and whose we are. The word of God will convict you. The word of God will rebuke you, but it's all purposeful not to hurt us, but to get us to a place of repentance to restore our relationship relationship. Seek ye first. Mark 11 and 28, and I'm done. Come to me, all you who are, are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's exactly the attitude that allows us to recognize that we can't carry the affairs and the cares of this world. Our shoulders are not broad enough. The Lord, the scripture says, the Lord knows what we need. He knows every aspect of our lives, and he knows exactly what we need to go forward. Watch it in him. Some of the things that we up at night worrying about may not be according to his will. There may be some things that we want to be God's will, but God said it's not my will. So I might not be saying no, but I haven't given you an answer. So I need you to change your prayer request. Is this your will? Because I want you to be my priority. I might be prioritizing my wants over my relationship with you. Y'all better hear the word of the Lord in here today. Ask the right questions. God, am I trying to make a square? Where peace fit in a square peg. 
Because I want what I want when I want it. And I haven't sought God. Watch it. And I haven't waited on his answer. And when his answer come, do I trust him enough to trust what God has to say? Family, I'm believing God for my all. I'm believing God for my all if the answer is no. I'm believing God for my all if it's wait. I'm believing God for my all if we got to have church on a parking lot. I'm in a season of my life that I want to just do what God told me to do, and he's going to work everything else out. Is there a witness in here tonight? That, Lord, I want you to guide me. I surrender all. I surrender my thought process. I surrender my ego. I surrender it all, God. Lead me. Direct me. Show me where you want me to be. And God, give me the courage to do it the way you want me to. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your reminders, God. God, we worry, oh God, about things, oh God, that are completely out of our control. Help us to trust you, Lord God. To talk to you, Lord God, when we don't know where to go. Help us to find you, God, that strong tower. God, that we can run to you and be saved. Go to your scriptures to remind us, God, of who we are, whose we are, and where we are. Help us, God, to realize we can't control.